You guys realize that in two days, something very historical is fixing to happen. We, um, and, and, and I'm going to ask this to those of you that are on the internet, please don't turn me off until you hear all that's being said this morning. Because Satan wants you not to hear the truth. We're experiencing that right now uh, with the world leaders. And notice I said world leaders. The title of this sermon is called Vote in God's Favor. Your vote will honor your God. Whether or not it's the God of Christianity or the God of this world, the God of evolution or the God of no gods, your vote will honor one of them. So the question is, which God are you going to honor? You say, wait, 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 wait. I I don't think that you should be mixing politics with religion. Hopefully, in the next few minutes, you'll realize that that statement is from the pits of hell. This is not a political warfare, Republican versus Democrat. Get that in your head. It is not. It is a spiritual warfare, good versus evil, kingdom of light versus the kingdom of darkness. Do you see that? Now, let's, let's, let's talk about two lies that are out there. Separation of church and state. You've heard that one? Well, Google this. The, the Supreme Court dismantled the establishment clause, clause of separation of church and state on June 21st, 2022. It isn't the law of the land anymore, guys. And it's still being dismantled. All right? How about this one? Politics and religions don't mix. Let me give you two quotes. One from what you would call a secular guy and another one that you would call a minister type guy. Those who believe that politics and religions don't mix understand neither one. That's from Albert Einstein. And here's the other one. The idea that religion and politics don't mix was invented by the devil to keep Christians from running their own country, Jerry Falwell. But if you don't give any credit to either one, how about one of our founding fathers? John Quincy Adam, the sixth president of the United States, said this, The greatest glory of the American Revolution was that it bound together in one indissolvable bound the principles of Christianity and the principles of civil government. So if you believe that politics and religion don't mix or separation of church and state, you're believing a lie that's coming from the pits of hell. And guys, it's time for us to call it what it is and realize who the enemy is and what they're feeding us. Our nation's motto is what? Come on. In God we trust. That should say a whole lot, but anymore it doesn't. Now, let's go scriptural, okay? Ephesians 6, 12, very familiar verse. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is so straightforward, guys. That's what we are battling with right now. It's not politics. It's good versus evil. It's God versus the devil. Is the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of Satan, the prince of the power, or the, the prince power of, of this world right now. We'll cover that here in a minute. So 
Let's talk about that. Let's go, let's go from a spiritual standpoint. We need to understand what the kingdom of darkness is all about. We need to understand its leadership, and that's Satan himself. And those that are following after him, what does it look like? Isaiah 14, 12. The evil ruler of the kingdom of darkness, who is Satan? You do know that, right? I got some heads like this. Do you know that? The kingdom of darkness, its ruler is Satan. This is what the Bible says about Satan. How you have fought, this is from Isaiah 14, 12. How you have fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning. You have been thrown down to earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. Satan is a destroyer. Do you see him doing that now? Whether it's in our nation or any other nation that even remotely resembles Christianity or God. He is doing what he can to destroy it. Do you see that happening even here? His scheme is to overthrow God's kingdom. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. In order that Satan might outwit us. For we are not unaware of his schemes. He's scheming against us. And again, I'm talking about the whole world, not just the United States. We're in the United States. That's why it's so personal. But go anywhere else in the, in the world. Anything that stands for God, he is scheming against. What scheming means? He's making plans. He's figuring this out that way. And he's got one thing in mind, and that's destruction. To destroy His deception, deceptive ways to control national leaders. This is from 2 Corinthians 11.3. Paul talking to the church in Corinth. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Do you see what he's saying? This is the scheme of Satan. We need to be aware that he is cunning. And he's trying to change the minds to lead us astray. We see so many Christians going that direction, believing, especially in separation of church and state, that politics and religions don't mix. Now, how is the war between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness being fought? Notice I'm staying with scripture here. John 10.10 10 says this, But the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. There it is, guys. That's the war between God and Satan, between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. The war that we are experiencing firsthand, front row seat, right now. Are we not? Do you see that? The kingdom of darkness, ruler, and its members. Let's, let's, let's cover that one. This is from John 8, 44. I'm using the NIV version. Christ talking to the world. Actually, to the leaders of the world at the time. You belong to your father, the devil. You want to carry out your father's desires. Do you hear it? He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, 
For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father thereof. Do you see it? Turn on the television. Listen to the news. Listen to the lies that are going on. Used to, they try to cover it, but they're getting so bold now, they're just saying it. Are we in the last days? Most definitely. Are we seeing a battle between good and evil, between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, like we have never seen it before in our lifetimes? Never seen it like this. The separation is unbelievable. It's even getting to the point where Christians are arguing with Christians about these very points that I'm talking about. Guys, we need to open our eyes and realize what's going on. Not in fear, but that we may be able to go against the power of the spirit of darkness. That we have the authority to tell them what they can and can't do. You understand what I'm saying? That we need to stand and make a difference any way that we can in arguing and, 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 and reasoning. Why? Because that's why we're here. And we'll be here until God takes us out. But in the meantime, you and I are messengers. That we are the ones that are supposed to be warning the world about the coming wrath. We can't stop it. We can't. We're not the judge. We're just messengers. And this is what God has told us to say. Why? Because I love my neighbors. I love this country. I love the, the people that Satan hates. I love my relatives. I love my friends. I love my boss. I want them to, to know that there is a truth that's there that they can't see. And it's mine and your responsibility. God didn't give this to angels. He gave it to his kids. Are you a child of God? Are you a peacemaker? Are you the one that's trying to bring peace between the world and God? That's where we're at. Guys, we need to realize where we're at, what we're fighting, and, and, and get engaged. Are we not soldiers? We are. What does that mean? We take everything that God has given us, the love, the spirit, the, the wisdom, the authority, right? His guiding, his, his very love. We are to rely on his power, on his reasoning, not our own. Why? Because God, even more so than you and I, wants to see this world saved. That's why he died on a cross, that we may see and have a relationship with God again. Is that true? Then we need to focus in on that and focus in on that singularity. Because when you start getting sidetracked, with the political and this and that and everything else, you're taking your eyes off of what God wants us to do. And that's to tell the world that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who believes in him should not perish. He doesn't want any of us to perish. That's our message. Do you agree with that? It's not to argue. It's to show love. It's to show reasoning. It's to use the craftiness that God has put inside of us. Craftiness, yeah. The Bible says that we should be as crafty as serpents and harmless as doves. Right? That mean be deceitful? No. Tell the truth. There's nothing more powerful than the truth. You can't argue with it. Although there's some that will. Amen. But guys, that's not our place. God's the one that does the convicting, but we are the ones that put the message out. Put it out there. Let your friends make their own minds up. We can't pressure them, but God can convict them. And unless God is the one doing the convicting, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Do you agree with that? Do you believe in the power of God Almighty? Do you believe in His love? Not only for you, but for the world. Then we need to quit leaning to our own understanding and start following after His. Amen? 
How does Satan control his kingdom's people? 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 4. But if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Now listen to it. In whom the God of this world, who's he? We know. Hath blinded the eyes of them which believe not. Notice they have chose not to believe. So because they believe not, that gives Satan the ability to blind them even more. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine up, shine unto them. Guys, we got to let that light shine. We've got to let it shine because they can make a difference. Well, you just said that Satan's blind their eyes. That's true. But you and I can show the light, show the light, show the light that maybe they will look at it and say, wait a minute. This doesn't make sense. Okay? We fight for righteousness and we fight for God's way as Christians. Right? Right? If you don't, you need to get in the fight. Amen? And the fight is not done in hatred or in anger. It's done in love. Right? People respond to anger. I don't want them to respond to my anger. I want them to respond to the love that God has put inside of our hearts. We need to let that love glow. We need to let that love for them to be the motivating thing that, tells, how, that makes us want them to see the truth. Because when you do it from love, you do it in a different way. Now, I have in the past had people done something, things that were wrong to me, and by anger I came back at from. But if my own kids whom I love had done the same thing to me, I come back a different way, don't you? Because I don't want to make them mad or, or against me. Although that's not a controlling factor, because I am their father, right? But... If we look at it that way, if I treat my kids different because I love them, shouldn't I be treating everybody else on this planet because I love them with the love that God had? We fight for righteousness in God's way. God's people fought for us. I can tell you of people in my lifetime who fought for me. I had grandparents. I had parents. I had friends. I had Sunday school <laughs> teachers who fought for me, who looked for ways to reason with me. I had a pastor that would stand in the pulpit and tell the truth, reasoning and reasoning, until it finally got through to me. Wait a minute. What if all this is true? You see where I'm coming from? They fought for us. Should we not continue to fight for those who are disobedient? I was disobedient, but they fought for me. I learned from them. And I want to take what I learned from them and apply it even more to those that are around me. Is this making sense? Ephesians 2, 1 through 2, NIV version. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin. That was me. That was you at one time. In which you used to live when you follow, uh, in, in, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. That's Satan. We all did it at one time. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Guys, that's who we fight against. It's not the person. It's the spirit. It's a spiritual warfare. We don't come against the evil in the person unless you recognize that the evil in the person is the devil himself. That's who we come against. And God has given us the authority. But keep in mind. 
God wants you to be free to make a decision. He always will. And that decision is what we made and the world makes. And God respects that decision. Now, decisions do have consequences. We've talked about that in the past. And if you decide not to follow after God, then your eyes are going to be blinded. You're going to be guided by your father, the devil, because he is the one in disobedience. He's the one that's in control. There's only two powers right now. There's God and Satan. Do you see that? And you and I have a choice which one to follow. I personally want to follow the good guy. I want to live forever. I want to live in a world that is free from sin. That's heaven. I want my soul cleansed and changed so I don't have the desires to do the wrong that Satan would want me to have. That day is coming when I get a brand new body, a brand new soul, a brand new heart. When I see him face to face, that day is coming. But until then, I'm going to fight with all I've got. How about you? In Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 to 12, it makes a statement that we are to hold back the lawlessness that is already at work. This is what it says. For the secret power of lawlessness. Notice the word lawlessness. Are we not seeing that over and over and over, especially in these last days? It's worse today than what it was yesterday. I got news for you. It's going to get worse. It's already on that decline. It's not moving up. It's getting worse and worse and worse. For the secret power power of lawlessness is already at work but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so until he's taken out of the way now I know there's people saying that's the Holy Spirit it can't be because the Holy Spirit is the only one who can lead you to God and if he's taken out then there's no hope for anybody after the rapture he's talking about the church he's talking about you and me that's the only way that you can interpret that and when the lawless one, and then the lawless one, let me, finish, let me read it again. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. That's the rapture, guys. That is what we are supposed to do until that happens. And when the lawless one, and then the lawless one, will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. That's the second coming at the end, the seven-year tribulation, which is going to start when we get out of here. You say, well, I don't believe that. You better start reading God's scripture and quit listening to these people that are lying to you. Or the ones that have been deceived. Anyway, let me keep going. Verse 9, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan. Displays in all kinds of confederate miracles, signs and wonders. And in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved we got to show them the truth, guys. We've got to keep showing the truth. Then it's up to them whether they want to believe it or not. And that decision has consequences. But the Bible says that if we don't warn them, then their blood is going to be on our hands. And I don't want that. I really don't want that. It's going to be bad enough. Now, let me just keep going. Is this making sense? Are you seeing what we're talking about right now? It's not a political warfare. We're actually watching the world get ready for the Antichrist. For a seven-year period unlike this world has ever seen before. And Scripture says that if Christ didn't stop it, no flesh would survive. Why? Because Satan wants to kill, to destroy, to do whatever he can. He is pure evil, and he is right now in control of the leadership of this world. 
I should get some amens on that. It amazes me. I used to wonder how in the world could Nazi Germany fool so many people to believe what they believed to the point that they murdered so many people. And yet I'm standing here looking and watching it happen all over again in my very nation. I'm watching the media being influenced and lie and lie and lie. Guys, you've got to get where you can tell the difference between a liar and someone who's telling you the truth. Anyway, didn't mean to go political, but I'm just pointing it out. This is what the evil people and the evil lead leaders of the kingdom of darkness do. This is what they do. This is from Isaiah. They've been doing this for thousands of years. It says, what sorrow for those who drag their sins behind them with ropes made of lies, who drag wickedness, uh, wickedness behind them like carts. Are we seeing that now? They even mock God, saying, hurry up and do something. We want to see what you can do. Let the Holy One of Israel carry out His plans, for we want to know what it is. They don't believe in the rapture. They don't believe if there's a God. They don't believe that there's a plan. If there is, show it to us. Well, He is showing it to you. And you're not looking. You don't want to look. You want to believe what you want to believe. Verse 20, what sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil, that dark is light and light is dark, that bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. That was written by who? Isaiah? This thing's been going on forever. The same tactics. What sorrow for those who are wise in their own eyes and think themselves so clever. Who am I describing? Verse 22. What sorrow for those who are heroes at drinking wine and boasting about all the alcohol they can hold. I, I have friends that are doing that. They, bri they, they take bribes to let the wicked go free. Hello? Are you listening to what's happening in New York? Yeah. They take bribes to let the wicked go free. They punish the innocent. Are we seeing that? Therefore, just as fire licks up stubble and dry grass shrivels in the flame, so shall their roots will rot and their flowers wither. For they have rejected the law of the Lord of heaven's armies. They have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Guys, God is going to revenge. He's had enough I can see that. If he did it with Israel, will he do it with our own nation? I want to interject this. In the next two days, actually in three, come Wednesday, we'll know whether or not our republic is going to survive or not. And there's two ways of looking at it. If it survives, yay. We got at least another two years to keep making a difference. Right? Well, that's true, maybe not true. But the other way is this. If we don't survive, we're that much closer to the rapture. Right? Guys, I'm going to rejoice either way. But I want to be able to stand before God and say, God, I did what you told me to do. I followed after you. I voted the way I was supposed to. That their blood is not on my hands. I'm following and trusting you. And if you decided to go that way or go this way, it's God that makes that decision. I'm going to follow it. 
And I'm going to follow it the way he told me to, with love, showing the light, showing the truth, that we may save a few. Amen? Isn't that the way we're supposed to see it? So I'm not afraid of what happens come Wednesday. I'm just following him. But I'm also going to say this. I'm sitting back and enjoying the show. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. God has got control, guys. He'll put the hooks in the jaws of the evil people and make them do things that they won't, don't want to do. I mentioned this last week and the week before. That when Babylon was coming against Israel and the, and the saints were crying out, God, why are you not listening to us? We're standing on your word. Why are you not protecting us? Why are you allowing this evil? Do you even listen to us? And his answer was this, I've had enough. And I am bringing Babylon against Israel because I've had enough. You can pray all you want to. But I got control of this. And I'm bringing it. And if that's what he's saying come Wednesday night, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. But that's not an excuse for me to get discouraged. It's not an excuse for me to fear. It's not an excuse for me to do anything that's going to give Satan any kind of glory or hold. Because my God is the one that lives inside of me and he's in control. And thank you, Lord, for giving me and you an opportunity to sit in these last days and watch it unfold right in front of us. Enjoy the show, guys, because at the end of this show, we win. Big time, we win. And the cool thing is I know, I know he's taking this out before the bad stuff really happens. Amen? I believe that, and I believe I have proven it to you over and over and over again through Scripture. How did this nation and the world become so evil? This is such easy reading. This is from Romans 1, 20 to 32. For since... The creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His internal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuses. Look at the miracles. Look at the very, the very body you're living in. What an incredible creation. Amen. For although they knew God, and you can relate this if you want to, to why not the United States? We know this pretty well. For although they knew God, and I'm, I'm telling you, our founding forefathers knew God. This, this was created a Christian nation. Satan's lying about it. It's still real easy to prove. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him. But their thinking became fruitile and their foolish hearts were darkened. We've watched that over, what, 200 years now? Gradually getting darker and darker. Although they claim to be wise, they become fools. Is that not evident today? Oh, my word, these people are talking such foolishness. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and rept animals and reptiles and everything else that evolution can throw at you. Am I telling you the truth? Isn't this neat? God has already got it planned out, already got it pointed out where we can see it clearly verse 24 therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another really is that on the increase big time they exchanged the truth of God for a lie. They worshiped and served the created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. Amen. 
This is the decline of nations. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanging natural relationship for unnatural ones. Are we seeing that? In the same way, men also abandoning natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committing indecent acts with other men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. Why is God going this direction? Sodom and Gomorrah is the only place that I know that God really showed how much he detests this. This is the, the ultimate part of Satan's way of destroying a nation. And God hates it so much. Sodom and Gomorrah, fire and brimstone, wiped them out. That tells me something, doesn't it, you? Why is Satan pushing this nation that direction? For the same reason. Because God, he knows that God hates it. I've been accused of being a legalist. Uh-huh. Because my God is a legalist. And if he wasn't a legalist, then why did Christ have to die on the cross? But we are being warned because of his love. And it's being spelled out in detail. I'm reading it to you. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, listen to what it's saying. He gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. That's pretty plain. They became filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, decent, and malice. Decent and malice. They are gossipers. It doesn't stop. Verse 30. Slanderers, God haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invented ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. That's pretty plain, guys. We're describing the United States of America. We're describing the world of you right now, not just here. It's worldwide. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Guys, what you are watching on the television, you've got to understand these people are ruthless. Those in our political how, how can I say offices? What they're doing is ruthless. They have no conscience. What should we do about it? Pray for them. Pray that God will open their eyes so they give them one more opportunity to see the truth. And if that don't work, then pray that Satan's spirit that's leading and guiding them will be disrupted so they see nothing but confusion. Can we do that? That's how we hold back evilness, guys. That's why we are in this fight. It's not about us versus them. <laughs> it's us praying for them that God will open their eyes, that they will open their eyes. God has given them every chance to open their eyes. But it's up to us to do what God has asked us to do, to follow God's heart. And God's heart is to see every soul saved. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous degree that those that do such things deserve death, they know it. They not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice with them. As a Christian, I can't vote for them because I'm not going to practice with them. I'm not going to approve them. So when you vote this Wednesday, you need to vote with God's approval. Amen? What is God's way of doing things? 
I've said this, and I'm going to say it one more time. One of the ways we hold back lawlessness is how we vote this Tuesday. I didn't get an amen on that one. One of the ways we hold back lawlessness is how we vote this Tuesday. I want to quote John Jay, the first chief justice of the United States. He said this, Providence has given to our people the choice of their rulers. It is the duty as well as the privilege and the interest of our Christian nation to select and prefer Christians for their rulers. It's one of our founding fathers. Separation of church and state blows that one out of the water. Politics has nothing to do with religion. They shouldn't mix. Blows that out of the waters. Ladies and gentlemen, I vote for those who stand for Christianity. I vote. How do you know who stands for Christianity? Not by what they say, by what they do and what they have done. You go by that. Because that's how we are supposed to know the difference between good fruit and bad fruit. A good vine and a bad vine. And if it's a bad vine, their fruit is full of bad stuff. Guys, you look at what they've done. Do I need to say any more? This election is about good versus evil. I'm going to leave that up there so you guys can see. This is what we're all about. We are voting for the righteousness of God in our nation and in its leaders. We vote for freedom of religion. We vote for freedom of worship to God. We vote for the rights of the innocent and the unborn. We vote for the law and the order and not for lawlessness. We vote for freedom of speech. We vote for freedom of choice. We vote for freedom of life. We vote for freedom. We vote for the pursuit of happiness. We vote for God and country. We vote for liberty. We vote for justice. We vote for the American way and not the socialist way or the Marxist way. Let me clarify. We vote for God's way and not Satan's way. Hear me, Christians? We vote for equality. We vote for security. We vote for privacy. We vote for the rights to bear arms and to protect ourselves and our family and our property against tyranny and all the evil of the earth. We vote for a government that we control and not a government that controls us. We vote for freedom of speech. We vote for non-censorship. We vote for the fight and the kingdom of light. We vote for the fight for the kingdom of light. And we will until God takes us home. Amen and amen and amen. Those of you that are on Facebook, I hope you take this to heart and understand this is scripture. This is we are right now. Don't be deceived because Satan is the best of the best. There's no one better than him. I mean, he even appears as an as a angel of light. He's that deceptive. Go by God's word. Read God's word. Please, Christians, vote in a way that is not only the way Christians should vote, 
but we should be voting for God and for his standards, for his morality. We're voting for a Christian nation and not a Marxist nation. A freedom of something that God has given us. But I don't care how bad it gets and it's going to get worse. Oh, wait, that's not a positive way of thinking. It is for me because the worse it gets, the more power God has given to you and me as Christians. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that you're following after him? Where evil abounds, grace much more abounds. Don't let Satan deceive you. If you're a child of God, stand on that. Listen to his wisdom. Let him guide you. Let him use you to make a difference in the world. That's the trust that he's put in his children. That's us. I don't want to betray that trust. I don't want that grace to be voided. I want it to be live and real. Let our lives show the world what God's all about. About the kingdom of heaven. About love and trust. What it's all about. What a great opportunity God has given us. And the power and the strength and his spirit and all the things that are there. Guys, don't be worried about what's happening. Enjoy the show. But at the same time, let's don't neglect what God has called us to do. Show the light. Show the light. Do good. Show the light. Do it in love. Show the light. Show the light. Amen. Those of you on Facebook, may God bless you, and you guys have a great day.